Hi, I'm Tina Pohl and I'm a Future Learn language tutor for this course. I'm one of the moderators for the British Council um, Learn English Team website um, and I also develop learning materials for them. I'm speaking to you today from Aski Piceno in Italy. It's been yet another amazing week this week with over 20,000 comments, nearly half of them uh, on week three, which has been all about technology in language learning and teaching. Paul Braddock from um, the British Council has led this week, which featured two live sessions with British Council tutors from around the world. I'd just like to point out that this review has been recorded before the Google Hangout. Uh, thank you to those that took part in the Facebook chat on Tuesday. It was um, a huge success and Neil will be talking about it a little later. Step 3.2, differences between online learning and phase two face learning has stimulated a lot of interesting debate this week, but the most commented step um, was 3.3, is it possible to learn languages well online or is face-to-face -face essential, which had around 1,900 comments. So thank you so much for that. Um, there, there were some interesting discussions taking place um, about these differences. Um, we noticed reoccurring themes like online learning meeting individual needs, offering more flexibility, um, but also the need for motivation, determination and organisation. Whereas face-to-face -face teaching provided better interaction for students, um, immediate feedback and offered a more natural environment. Many of you felt that the blended option was preferable and that studying a language solely online was not the best way to learn a language. Um, learners could alternate between face-to-face -face and online learning depending on the course they were taking and their motivation. Some of you mentioned that face-to-face -face was uh, essential to learners, especially at the beginning of learning a, a language, um, and that the age group of the learner was player, also played an important role in language learning and young learners benefited hugely from face-to-face -face interaction. Step um, 3.4, um, online learning and languages also created a lot of discussion this week. Uh, some of you felt it was effective in reading, writing and listening, but face-to-face -face was still better for speaking. Uh, flexibility played a key part in your comments as well, as did the amount of material which was available for learning online. One thing I'd also um, like to mention is that many of you commented um, that learners who lacked in confidence would benefit from doing an online course. 3.5 was about engaging with online learning. Uh, from your comments, most of you um, really uh, are really enjoying uh, this course and love that you can engage with the learners from all over the world, um, that you can interact with each other um, by reading the comments and by sharing your opinions. Um, many of you felt that you needed to be responsible for your development and must manage your time effectively. Uh, also try not to become too distracted by other things online um, while you were studying, uh, like Facebook or Twitter, or in some cases, uh, like me, online shopping. We look forward to reading more of your comments uh, in the last week, next week, uh, so we'll see you there. Hi, I'm Neil McLaren. I'm also a Future Learn Language Tutor for this course and I'm a Social Media Coordinator for the British Council. I'm responsible for the learner channels including the Global Learn English Facebook page, Learn English Teams Facebook page and Twitter and YouTube channels. Following on from the points that Tina mentioned about Step 3.5, uh, it was interesting for me that around 40% of the comments in this step were from people for whom this was their first ever online course. At the other extreme, we had people who had participated in up to 20 MOOCs, uh, so we got a wide range of experience and input and discussions. As you'd expect, flexibility was the single most important factor that people enjoyed, followed by the ability to interact with such a huge number of other learners from all over the world. The short bite-sized presentations were also mentioned as a positive, um, and this was contrasted with some people's previous experience where they felt sometimes swamped by the materials on online courses. On the other hand, a lot of people mentioned that they found it very challenging uh, to navigate so many comments. And quite a few echoed Laura's point about sometimes feeling quite isolated. 
That leads us on to the discussion in step 3.6, which looked at teaching in the new environment and the challenges that that brings. We again ask you to share your personal experiences, this time more from a teaching perspective, and while most participants hadn't yet taught online themselves, many had in one form or another. So we had input from teachers ranging from experience with simple synchronous learning using one-to-one -one Skype calls through VLE-based courses and blended options. Task design, organizing course content, and maintaining student motivation were the key areas that you felt were most challenging. There was also a lot of discussion of the technical challenges and on which platforms and tools to use. More experienced teachers shared the tools they'd used and recommended, such as Moodle, Voxopop, Edmodo, Quia, and others. One important point raised, though, was how to choose the best platform or medium to meet your specific needs. And this was something that was also addressed several times in our Facebook discussion. The Facebook discussion itself went very well indeed. It reached more than 50,000 people with more than 160 questions asked. I think it was a successful example of how social media can be used in this type of course, and the feedback from those who took part and from those who viewed the discussion later has been very, very positive. Unfortunately, a lot of you were unable to take part because of time restrictions or not having access to Facebook. In a way that underlines some of the issues to think about regarding synchronous discussions and choice of platform. We've included a link to the discussion below though, so even if you're not a Facebook user, you can read through the questions and answers. I'm sure you'll find a lot there that will help you. Uh, one of the most common questions that came up was, I've never taught online before, how do I get started? Which is very encouraging on a course like this. Uh, we shared a number of articles and guides in the discussion, and you'll find some of these links below as well. Another popular area was um, how to incorporate speaking practice and assessment in online learning. And both ourselves as tutors and some of the teachers who were joining in the discussion shared various suggestions on how to do that and tools that can help with that. Uh, on the question of motivation in online courses, that was an area that you looked at in more depth in Step 3.8. Hi, sorry I had to change location. Uh, as I was saying, in the discussion on 3.8 there was some disagreement over the differences in roles between face-to-face -face and online tutors, with some people feeling the differences were significant, uh, particularly the social and organizational roles which they felt were more demanding for online tutors. Others though commented that they didn't really see any fundamental difference in roles, just the balance between them was perhaps different and the, the methods that were necessary to implement them. One repeated concern, though, was over time. Most people felt that online tutoring was likely to be more demanding, even to the extent of some teachers worrying about the online demands taking over their lives. Uh, these points were also discussed in the Facebook discussion, and you'll find some useful advice there on organisation and time management. Um, finally, there was a, very, a lot of very active and interesting discussion on Step 3.9, looking at connectivism, uh, the theory that learning happens in informal, online, connected spaces through sharing ideas and resources. Many people asked if it's really possible to genuinely connect and interact on such a large-scale MOOC as this. Some said yes, some said no. One commenter mentioned that although many people are posting on the online discussions, it doesn't feel like they're interacting with each other in most cases. But another person wrote that if you just like a comment because you agree or find it interesting, but don't feel you have to add anything, it's still a form of interaction. It's like nodding your head in a face-to-face -face discussion, for example. It's one of the most active discussions uh, we've had so far, so if you haven't checked through it, go to the most liked comments on step 3.9, and I think you'll find it very interesting. So that's our review of the week. We hope you've enjoyed it and got a lot from it. Uh, we've added a number of links below this video for you to check in on. Next week, in our final week, we'll be looking at the use of English as a lingua franca, as well as the controversies around the increasing spread of English. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, bye for now.